Now on to prediction using Excel Miner platform. In this example, we use the Boston Housing Dataset, which contains 14 variables, each describing a census tract within the city of Boston. Each row or record contains housing data and each column describes a feature of the house. The goal is to predict the median house price in the Boston housing tracts. Let's first see how we can use the feature selection capability to identify a subset of the original features that we can use to build a predictive model with significantly better performance in determining home price median values. Here when we use the word features, it means the same as columns or variables. Select the cell within data, click on Explore, Feature Selection. In the first dialog, select all the variables as continuous variables except MEDV and CAT.MEDV. MEDV is the median value of owner-occupied homes in thousands of dollars and CAT.MEDV is a categorical variable that has been derived from the MEDV variable. Select MEDV as our output variable. Let's make sure Excel Miner recognizes this as a prediction task by selecting continuous in the output variable type. Now click on Next. On the Measures tab, let's check the boxes for the three correlation filters, Pearson, Spearman, and Candle. Now you can either click on Next or directly click on Output Options. In the Output Options, let's select Top Features Table and increase the number of features to 5. Let's keep all the other default settings and click on Finish. This is the Variable Importance Plot which ranks the variables in order of importance according to Pearson's Rank Order Coefficient. It shows us that the two variables LSTAT and RM are most important, followed by PT Ratio and Industry. Let's click on Feature Selection Top Selection. The Selected Predictors table shows us that by Pearson criterion, the two variables LSTAT and RM are most important, followed by PT Ratio and Industry. Next, let's click on Detailed Feature Selection Report. Let me sort the p-values from the smallest to largest. As you can see, this shows exceedingly small p-values for LSTAT and RM, again followed by PT ratio and industry. So we started out with 13 features and now we know rather quickly that 4 of them matter the most. Armed with this knowledge, let's practice multiple linear regression method. Click on Data tab. First, let's partition the data into training and validation sets using the standard data partition defaults. Select the cell within the data, click on Partition, Standard Partition. Here, let's select the top features as identified by our feature selection algorithm and also add MEDV. Let's keep all the defaults and click on OK. Now let's select the cell on this data partition worksheet, then click on Predict, Multiple Linear Regression. Let's select MEDV as our output variable and all other variables as our selected variables. Click on Next. Here you could select fitted values and ANOVA table options to review the results in the output. Let's select all the options under score training and score validation data. Let's click on variable selection and check on this box. With variable selection, you could automatically select various subsets of the data to determine which variables have the highest contribution. Excel Miner Platform offers five different selection procedures for selecting the best subset of variables. Backward elimination, forward selection, 
sequential replacement, best subsets, and stepwise selection. Since we have already used feature selection and reduced the number of features to four, we'll skip using it in this practice example and we'll just run multiple linear regression straight. So let's uncheck perform variable selection and click on OK. Now click on finish. Here are the results. Again, with this output navigator, you can click any link to display the related results. Let's click on regression model link. This table contains the coefficient value, the standard error of the coefficient, the p-value, and the sum of squared error for each variable included in the model. A little further down is the summary report. This report summarizes the prediction error. The first number, the total sum of squared errors, is the sum of the squared deviations between the predicted and actual values. The second is the square root of the average of the squared residuals. The third is the average deviation. Next, let's click on Training a Score Detail Report. Here we can review the predicted and actual values of each training record along with the residual, which is the difference. You can also review the confidence and prediction intervals. Let's click on training lift chart. Lift charts and RROC curves are visual aids for measuring model performance. Here is the lift chart for our training data. It compares the multiple linear regression model performance against the model with no predictors. Since the lift curve is higher than the baseline, we can say that our multiple linear regression model predictive performance is better than the baseline model. The decile wise lift chart also tells us that our model outperforms the baseline model. In the RROC curve, we can compare the performance of a regressor with that of a random guess, for which underestimations are equal to overestimations shifted to the minimum underestimate. Area over the curve, or AOC, is the space in the graph that appears above the ROC curve. The smaller the AOC, the better the performance of the model we see that the area above the curve is fairly small, which indicates that this model is a good fit to the data. Let's click on validation lift chart. As you can see, we can get the same type of information for the validation set. 